This is the GIS Evening Report for Monday, June 17, 2024. I am Chrisanne Mitchell. In the headlines, Social Development Minister calls for more to be done to protect the elders from abuse. And software engineer says artificial intelligence can boost reach and innovation for the creative industry. We'll have details of these stories and more when we return. This June marks government's second year in office. Let's reflect together in a series of town hall meetings, discussing and planning for the next year and beyond. St. Patrick, we're coming your way first on Monday, June 10th at McDonald College. Then it's St. Andrew the following Monday, Monday, June 17th at the Deluxe Cinema in Grenville. On Wednesday, June 19th, we journey to the Sister Isle of Kiariku at the Hillsborough Government School. And it all culminates in St. George on Monday, June 20th. 24 at the Boca Secondary School. All meetings start at 7 p.m. Your voice matters and we want to hear from you. Join us in this engaging and informative series of discussions as we work towards a better future together. Don't miss out on this opportunity to engage with your government officials. Also live on GIS Channel 22. Together, we can work towards a brighter future. See you there. Welcome back. Minister for Social and Community Development and Housing, Honorable Gloria Thomas, made a clarion call for more to be done collectively to protect elders from elder abuse. She made the call during her address to observe World Elder Abuse Awareness Day 2024 on June 15th. According to Minister Thomas, a day set aside to highlight abuse, neglect and exploitation of senior citizens must not be taken for granted. Therefore, government is prioritizing emergency preparedness and response strategies to ensure the safety and security of the elderly, which includes training of caregivers and support service providers. Emergency planning and response are extremely important for the state of Grenada. Based on our vulnerability as a small island developing state, we are faced with many challenges because of our geographical location and the threats posed by global warming. As a government, we take our responsibility seriously in ensuring that the safety and security of all the people are prioritized in our emergency preparedness and response strategies. This includes inter alia, the development of inclusive policies that ensure older persons are not overlooked. For example, ensuring the continuity of access to healthcare services, developing accessible evacuation plans, providing emergency shelters that meet their needs, offering targeted support to prevent the isolation and abuse of older persons, and training carers and emergency responders and other supportive service providers. The observance was held under the theme Spotlight on Older Persons in Emergencies. Government, through the Ministry of Social and Community Development, Housing and Gender Affairs, will develop sound policies and legislations to create a society that is fair and just for older people. Through the deaths of the elderly, my ministry has begun assisting the Grenada National Council on Aging to engage past members and launch a new membership drive to relaunch this organization because we believe that it has a very important role to play in advocating for the care, protection, and right of older people in the state of Grenada. I must commend the members of staff at the desk of the elderly for their hard work and dedication in providing psychosocial interventions to older people who are experiencing some form of abuse. I appeal to the general public to report any abuse of older persons in your community to the desk of the elderly, the ministry's sub-offices or the nearest police station. Remember, if you see it, it is your duty to report it. Creatives in the region will amplify their impact if they accept automation and artificial intelligence as a collaborator and not a competitor. 
That's according to fashion blogger and software engineer Psyche Southwell, while addressing the gathering at the 8th Annual Growth and Resilience Dialogue recently organized by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB. Southwell's presentation was the highlight of the recent episode of the ECCB Connect television program. As governments in the region focus on increasing investments and establishing ways to highlight creatives, she said it is important to recognize that AI can boost reach and innovation as a collaborator and not a competitor. When you find the synergy between human creativity and computational power, you're going to unleash innovation. Unleash innovation and amplify your impact. And if for a region we want to boost innovation, boost our reach, we have to find some kind of a symbiosis between both of those things. Can I get an amen? Anybody agree with that? All right. Time is your resource. You have to protect it. And when you protect it with you by using computational power and infusing that into your process, guess what? You have more time to focus on being creative. That's what we want creatives to do, to unleash their creative impact by relying on AI. Not being replaced by AI, allowing AI to be a collaborator. Southwell shared three software that can be used to enhance their productivity at little to no cost given the budgetary and time constraints that they face. ChatGPT, 10web.io, and Synthesia.io. It's called 10web.io. See, tell you not, and she doesn't know what that is. Eh? 10web.io. Go to that site. You will be required to set up an account. It is quick. We are going to do it live, okay? 10web.io. I'm mentioning ChatGPT here because this is one of those other tools that the free tier you should be using right now as a creative. It is not in competition with you. It is here as a second brain an assistant, something to help you gain clarity, something to you know, bounce ideas off of. And guess what? You have it 24 seven available to you. Use it. This is the GIS Evening Report. The news will continue after the break. Never the answer. Let's talk it out. We need a safe space for our children to grow up, so let us respect each other. You see this little light of mine? I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna keep it burning for the children is looking on. So let's take advantage of the gun amnesty in full effect until July 30th. Remember, the answer is love. A message from the Ministry of National Security. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna keep it burning. The gun amnesty remains in effect until July 30th. A message from the Ministry of National Security. Welcome back. The Grenada Food and Nutrition Council has shifted focus for the landmark diet survey from in-person data collection through enumerators to online as the collection process is slower than anticipated. The survey is a collaboration between the GFNC, the University of the Southern Caribbean in Trinidad and Tobago and the St. George's University to highlight food consumption, dietary habits and vulnerability to diseases among other important data pre and post COVID-19. The process began in April and is scheduled to be completed July 31st, 2024, following recommendations made in 2023 by the Food and Agricultural Organization to revise Grenada's food and nutrition security policy. Executive Secretary at the GFNC, Mrs. Lydia Brown, explained that in order to meet the July 31st deadline, a more robust approach must be undertaken. The digital forms can be found on the GFNC's website and Facebook page, the Facebook pages of GIS and the Ministry of Agriculture. It is imperative that we have maximum support from all areas across the island. Participation is voluntary. 
and participants must be at least 18 years old and only one person per household is required to fill the questionnaire. There is a flyer with a QR code and a link that is being circulated. These are available on the Food and Nutrition Council Facebook page, our website, gfnc.gov.gd, the Ministry of Agriculture's Facebook page, Boss FM Facebook page, and the Government Information Service, GIS Facebook page. Additionally, we have circulated this link to many of our contacts and are asking that if you receive the link, that you would fill the survey and additionally share it with your contacts, other families, friends, co-workers, so that we can get this information completed by July 31st. The data collected will be used to implement developmental policies and programs as Grenada pushes a healthier, sustainable agenda. The intention is to have the findings compiled and analyzed by the end of the year. The information is currently coming in, but it's not coming in as fast or as quickly as we expected. And so we're hoping that with your help, with every Grenadian help, we will be able to share this link and get involved and have a voice in contributing to data collection and action for Grenada, Caraco and Pitti Martinique. Continuing the news, registration for the Division of Youth's Empower program continues. The process began in Karakou last week for young men between the ages of 18 to 35. It gives them opportunities for self-empowerment, holistic development, skill certification, and employment. At the end of the 12 months of training, successful participants qualify for a grant fund to start their own business. The registration train moves to the YWCA building grant Phil St. Andrew tomorrow, Tuesday, June 18th, to St. Patrick at the Fond Rec Recreational Ground, June 19th, and at St. Mark and St. John, June 21st and 24th, at the Resource Center and Pastoral Center, respectively. Prospective candidates must walk with their banking details and national identification card. Finally, in the news, Senator Claudette Joseph says the inaugural pan fest in the town of St. George as a tribute to fathers was indeed a success. The event was held on the pedestrian plaza carnage and attracted scores of people along with vendors from the town of St. George. There were performances from the Nexa New Dimensions, Suzuki Food Fair Pan Wizards along with Soka and Groovy Artists. On completion of the event, Senator Joseph sp spoke with the GIS, expressing her gratitude to all who ensured that the event was successfully executed. So we decided to have this, this uh, festive event for the community. Um, and on Father's Day, we know it focuses a lot on Mother's Day traditional, but not much emphasis is put on Father's Day. So we decided to do something for the fathers and for the community. Bearing in mind what has happened recently, you know, with all the gang related incidents and the gun violence and so, we wanted to bring some positive energy and positive vibes in the community. And I think it, the event was a great success, I would say. Um, the community is here, the, the right vibe and the right feel, and then the festive um, mood is here. We had some lovely giveaways for the fathers. The event, she says, was family-oriented and was designed to promote strong, positive community spirit. Using the community groups that are predominant in the area, that is the steel bands. You know, the town is known for having three of the major steel bands. And then Common Cheros is our neighbors right next to always involved in activities in the town. So it made sense to use the existing successful community group to help to bring us together on this father's. And I think we succeeded. And we also, as the notice highlighted, some young soca acts. Um, all of them actually from different parts of the town of St. George. And I know they're very happy to have um, performed here and to you know, let people hear their music and so So that's a kind of positive vibe, positive energy we want to push to encourage young people to turn towards 
these community organizations and groups as opposed to gangs and, and um, deviant behavior. Here now are some highlights from Suzuki Food Fair Pan Resorts and Nexa New Dimensions performances at the inaugural Father's Day Pan Fest. Special tokens were also given to a number of fathers within the town of St. George. This ends this evening's broadcast. I am Chris and Mitchell saying thank you for viewing. <laughs>